Welcome to Metabolism Matters. I'm Jennifer Woolley. Today we'll be taking a look at using indirect calorimetry to feed a patient with a number of ailments made even more complicated because of an amputation. The case we're going to look at involves a male patient in their early 70s with acute arterial insufficiency. This patient also had a history of peripheral vascular disease, hypertension, coronary artery disease, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Now let's look at the patient's nutrition parameters. Height is 5 foot 10 inches. His actual body weight is 98 kilograms, with an ideal body weight at 75.5 kilograms. So this patient comes in and is taken to the operating room for a right femoral tibial bypass. Sadly, he develops post-operative complications that include a heart attack, kidney failure, low blood pressure, plus he has to have an above-the-knee amputation. After the amputation, we need to adjust his ideal body weight, and that is now 64.2 kilograms. I think it's obvious that this patient had quite a bit going on, and that's exactly why he was a good candidate for indirect calorimetry. He has multiple organ dysfunction, altered fluid status from the kidney issues, and then of course there's the amputation. So honestly, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that you would fail to account for by simply using predictive equations. So you're probably wondering what happened. Well, the patient's first indirect calorimetry studies showed that the patient required fewer calories than what was predicted. So we fed him 100% of the measured REE. And then take a look at this great number trend. Using indirect calorimetry measurements throughout the patient's stay, we saw an increase in the patient's REE, which is exactly what you want to see when someone is healing. I like to call this an indirect calorimetry happy ending, because although the patient was up against some tough circumstances over a short period of time, he continued to improve. And a big part of supporting a healing trend is getting the right amount of nutrition to the patient, which is where indirect calorimetry came in. Well, that's it for today. This is Jennifer Woolley for Metabolism Matters. See you next time.